G'day, James here from Espresso Resto. Today, we're going to be looking at an upgrade to a KitchenAid dual boiler espresso machine. It's essentially two Gaggia boilers in the one machine. We've had a look at one of these machines before, but I'm actually just going to do a bit of a quick run through on how to do the Runcilio steam wand upgrade to this machine. So stay tuned and we'll just go through the steps. So as you can see, this is the original steam wand and it comes with a plastic Panarello attachment to the bottom. Most people have removed these, but it, it does leave a little to be desired because the steam one's quite high. And you know, then there's all these little nooks and crannies that the milk can cake up into. So basically what we wanna do is get rid of this whole wand assembly here and put in a nice new Ranchilio Silvia steam wand. So that's what it looks like there. This is with the um, steam valve from the Silvia attached. We all just remove that. Get rid of that and that's not necessary we're basically just retaining this bottom piece here so now i'll just go through the steps of how to open up this KitchenAid machine and and what you need to do to install this wand so starting at the top of the machine you've got this cup holder guard rail you just pull that off that's easy inside here you've got three millimeter hex or allen keys so i've got my trusty three millimeter T-bar one, we'll just get them out. So I've undone all these Allen keys or hex keys, um, hex bolts from the top of the lid. There's also this, this little um, normal Phillips head um, screw here. You just undo that. That's just like a, a safety safety thing so you pull that out then you can lift the whole lid off and look up inside there yep look at this so there's your steam boiler down here and in in underneath in here is in the big dome is the uh, brew boiler so next step here is we need to take a few things off the front so I'll go around the front and we'll pull them off it's pretty much the whole uh, disassembly can be done with a three mil uh, Allen key. So the next bits to do is you need to pull off these um, surrounds here. You also need to remove the steam knob and also this this surround. The buttons do stay in place. You just pull this surround away from the buttons. So let me just start you off here. And do both while holding the cam at the same time. Don't have my cameraman today. Still in bed. There we go. Steam wand, yank that off. You might catch a glimpse of the new pup at the moment. But, uh, there you go, spin that off. This is a much longer screw, this one, so you just want to be careful with this one. It's got a little copper piece there. See that? Okay, so we've got those two clear. All right, next step is to look underneath here. And these metal surrounds here can be removed. There's two holding each one on. Again, the uh, trusty three mil hex bolts. So spin them off. I'll spin them off and we'll have a look in a second. So I got the uh, little bolts off. Oh, that's a little pack. <laughs> Pull those surrounds off. Get all these things off. So next thing to do, you need to actually pull these gauges, these gauges here, just twist them to release them from here. We'll do that in a sec. It's actually just a touch easier to remove the gauges by first actually um, re removing these screws. So then you have a bit more movement of this top top uh, section of cast aluminium. You move that, we can jiggle that around and then you can have a bit more access in behind to remove the gauges and then move, lift the whole, um, off, this whole top cast section off the machine base. Okay, so undo these, it's a 10 mil socket. 
<laughs> Drop my tool. Get them wound off. All right, so I've loosened all these off. Lift them all out. Then you can see the, the whole top section is loose now. And so you got to lift that off carefully, looking to sort of move it past and over these uh, switches here and here. And then also to disconnect these gauges. And then the whole cast top section will be free to remove from the machine. Just carefully do that. I'm just going to do that now out of cam. So that was relatively easy. Just these gauges just, you know, tiny twist and they sort of cam off the um, shrouds that hold them in place. That whole top section lifts off again. Yeah, so, so you can see a lot more about the machine. So again, that was a steam boiler on that side and in that dome was the, the brew boiler. You can see they're both the same Gaggia style aluminium boilers, external um, elements on the side. So this is what we're looking to do. Essentially, this is the steam valve assembly and we are going to be undoing this nut here and the whole um, valve, uh, sorry, um, wand will come off. What we do need to do is we need to increase the size of this hole here because the Ranchilio nut is quite a bit larger. So to fit up and in there and also we have to have an adapter piece between the valve assembly here and the wand which is here and this is a one quarter female bsp to one eighth male bsp and the one eighth male fits into the ranchilio fits into the ranchilio wand okay and the quarter BSP female screws up onto the steam valve of the KitchenAid. All right, so what we'll do is now we'll unscrew some two little um, Phelps head screws here that hold the valve assembly on, and we can then lift the valve assembly out of the way and remove the steam wand, okay? So I got the steam wand out of there. It's a um, 17 mil spanner to remove that. Just want to when you do remove that just support support the the top bit of the valve with like some grips or something like that so that you don't twist things around while you're trying to um remove the steam wand okay so i'll do that right so this is the spring and um ball holder from the ranchilio so you don't need that need to retain the spring and ball holder from the KitchenAid because uh, it fits up inside the valve. The spring fits up inside the valve, whereas this spring fits too wide to fit up inside this valve. So make sure you keep, keep that one. You can just put that one to one side, discard that. And this is the adapter, okay? So you can use some Teflon tape or something like that just to give it a bit more seal. Um, all right, so we'll put that together and this is the hole we need to widen So what I've got is a step a step drill here. This one's like a 4 mil to 30 mil. So you basically just need to keep taking t taking that hole out with your step drill until the Ranchilio wand nut can fit up through. So currently you can see that it won't fit through. Only just though, looking at that, it's just, just a little bit of lack of clearance. So I'd say a couple, couple of mil you're basically taking out. So you're not taking out a lot of space. Um, all right, so we'll get to that and then come back and we're all back together again. Taking out that hole. So now the wand will fit through just might want to just be careful because some of the cut edges will be quite sharp. You want to get a file and just give it a little bit of a clean up so there's no sharp edges so that you don't later on end up sticking yourself with a little metal shard. So 
I'll just clean that up and then we'll screw it all back together again. So I've reattached or attached the um, Sylvia wand to the valve. So the Sylvia wand nut is a 22 millimeter nut. So you need a fairly big spanner or a shifter to get that screwed on nice and tight. So what you've got there is you've got the Teflon seal from the Sylvia between that and the adapter. And then there's um, the original seal between the valve and the adapter. So there's um, seals through both. You can use a bit of seal. It, like if you're having some leaks, use some Teflon tape or some form of Loctite, whatever works for you. So to put that back in, I've just undone this little earth strap here just to give myself a bit more clearance to lift this lift this up and then slide it down into to here. And then you just need to screw these screws back in underneath and then it'll be reattached and we can start putting everything back together. Right, so these screws are, are back in. Reattach the earth strap. So this is the next challenge, right? So the clearance between the bottom of the wand and the ground is not really ideal for trying to get a, a jug under to froth. So that's where you have to increase the height here between the bottom of the machine and the bench top. So you need to put in some feet extensions and I'll have a look at that in a little bit. Hang on, the world is not upside down. I've put it all back together again and now we've got to really have a look at these feet and increasing the size of these feet. So you need to take the base off because you'll need to access underneath these. So there's these six Allen keys, or in this case five, because one of them broke off. But yeah, spin them out. They are, I guess they're four mil. Yeah, four mil Allen keys. So we'll, get, we'll spin them out, get the base off, and I'll show you what to do next. Right, so these are the original feet. They basically just push in. They've got like a little bung, they're bunged in. So you, what you want to do is just flip it over. Excuse this one, this is a bit of a rough, rough one. So you basically just go into the back of them and press down with like a, you know, some sort of Allen key or screwdriver or something and push them all out. There's six of them. Then you'll end up with a little hole here like this. And you'll want to get yourself some Oops, excuse me. I'm gonna get yourself some M6 by 25 stainless bolts, like a screw head, and they'll come with a nut. I've also got some nylon M8 washers, and also a little, about a 30 millimeter um, buffer. These are actually used on like uh, the side so that doors don't, when they when you swing open a door, they bump into this rather than anything, but these work as really good fit. So you put a little nut in there and see, and the screw will go through there. So I'll show you how to put it all together. Put that underneath with sort of three washers in. I'll show you, put that over. So three of these little nylon washers you pack them into into this hole that the rubber leg would have gone inside so that packs that up then your foot goes there and then the screw comes up from underneath and holds it all together that's pretty much it so replace all six of them with that same sort of technique i'll include links um, in the video um, chat below the comments below so that you can find them if you're in Australia and I'll give some general descriptions as to what they are if you're outside of Australia so you can find something equivalent. All right, and then we'll put it all back together again and I'll show you the final image. So, got all of those legs installed. You can see the nuts holding them down the inside, the toes up, and the uh, so stainless steel bolts so they should be good even though <laughs> the corrosion on this particular one this is a 
endemic issue with this particular type of machine. The cast aluminium body does, particularly around the solenoid discharge area, does get a bit corroded. It um, does not affect function of the machine at all. All right, so I'm gonna now put the base back on top of the machine and then put the machine back. You can uh, see that the wand has adequate clearance now. So those tall legs are on, giving a bit more clearance here. Now it's a lot easier to get the jug in to froth the milk. So that's all done. So once the wand is in, the feet have raised up the wand so that we can get a jug underneath and it's all done. So till next time, Keep caffeinated.